Good early morning to you. It's 5.30 in the morning here in central Kansas. The weather says it's supposed to rain according to our little thingy here. That could be a problem. Um, so first things first. Uh, money. <laughs> $422,000. Yeah, we got some money. So we've got two bales for the sheeps. And we're going to move him in a minute. And I emptied these silos out. And I went ahead and brought all of the all of the guff off of the the wheat. And I brought it over here and I went ahead and and baked it and then emptied it and all of that. So we have almost five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. We're finally making it. Now, as a further reminder, we have canola planted in our fields here so this this field has been planted with canola it was plowed was it plowed yes it was plowed cultivated and fertilized so we're going to find out what our yield is on this canola and see what we can do about that i'm concerned about the weather though hmm so we got this threat of rain it looks okay. I mean, it looks like there's something on the horizon, but let, let's hope we can get something done before any rain shows up. And then we have to take care of a few other house cleaning items that we can take care of. Y'all been asking for, so we're going to get the big old cat. We're going to head on over to the field. Go ahead and get them into field prep. Yeah, buddy. So, uh, y'all liked the high speed, so we will do that big field and high speed. I'm, I've got other things to do while he's harvesting the, uh, the small field here. So, turn him in. There we go. Go, and you can see I've got the ES limiter mod. I went and got that because I was driven crazy by not being able to keep my vehicles next to each other. There we go. Let's hope we get this harvest in before it rains, because we don't want it to rain on us. Alright, first things first. Y'all made it quite clear to me. The Lindener needed to go. And y'all really wanted a Ford up in here. Now, there's also that case that I covered. And I'm thinking, I'm going to look at the price tag again. I think the Ford with the front end loader, the advantage there is I have my front end loader for running uh, pallets, wool pallets from over wherever the heck my sheep are, over there. So that'll save me a little bit of money. I can also think about doing something with the lizard loader. Turn that off, hop out, Let's sell, and sell. Cool. Now, let's go to oop, mods. So yeah, it's 53.3 for the case for the $140 a day maintenance. Um, Y'all were saying that this would be a good replacement for like the Kirovitz. I could probably get away with putting the Kirovitz away and replacing it with this. But I want the Ford. And there was some discussion about whether I should get the the 8340 with the front three point or whether I should get this one with the front end loader. I'm going to go with the front end loader because I do want to be able to sell my wool pallets. So we're going to go ahead and buy that. And we're going to go to front loaders. I'm going to go ahead and buy the pallet fork for it. And oops. I'm going to go to Baling Tech. Actually, no, we're not. That's silly. We have mods that can do this. Nope, that's wrong. We have mods that can do this. We're going to get the... Not in there. Must be in tippers. And rower, mower. It's so much worse now that I've got all the other things on here. Um, Tipper. 
Where is... Did I just miss... I must have just missed it. There it is. Duh. The Kane Low Load Trailer. I think that would be perfect for handling stuff. And it gives me something else to transport. Um, you know, if I need to transport some equipment, I can put some equipment on there. On like the Kirovitz or something like that. Now I do know that these guys use fuel when a worker is in them. I understand that. Oop, get in the tractor, silly. I understand that, but I think it's a worthwhile investment. Oop, oh. Uh, where's my where's my attach point? There it is. <laughs> Jeez. Wow, that's some big fork there. <laughs> and y'all did say if I if I had a problem with needing weight on the front, just go, you know, grab a pallet or a bale or something. There we go. Sweet. I think that's a fuel efficient way to get not a fuel efficient, uh, a cost efficient way. We got rid of the Lindener, we paid, we got a tractor, a front loader, and a trailer. We're really no worse off. Where is my barley calculations? There's my barley calculations. All right. I know how much barley we picked up, barley, canola, how much canola we picked up with just I'm going to crash if I don't pay attention. Just um, cultivation. We're already way past that. All right, let's drop that off. And we're just going to drop this off right now because deal with that later. All right, are you done? You calling it done there, bud? Let's come on over here and check. Yeah. I'll spot them two. <laughs> spot them two. So, 53.84 is what we got when we had 53.84 with fertilizer, plow, and cultivator. When we just plowed the field, I'm sorry, just cultivated field, we got 26.91. So we got a uh, over doubled our yield. So that's great. However, we might have doubled our yield. But even though it's 640 per ton at the end. We also don't have um, the straw to, to take over to the biogas facility. So I'm not sure I'm not sure that this is such a good idea. All right, we're gonna stop that guy there. Um, we need to go back one more. There's our tractor. Okay, moment of truth. We're going to go hook up to the grain train. Where is the grain train? Grain train's over here. We're still kind of in a rush in case rain comes. We don't, we don't want to lose harvest because of rain. Alright, let's go. Seem to have a problem yet. Good. Good, good, good. Alright. Before we go and harvest down this field here, I'm going to go ahead and unload the cat. Don't go too far. Ugh. Bugger. The one thing I don't like about the Fords is, is being forced into the interior view when you get in. Um, I don't mind the interior view, but um, it does make it kind of difficult when you're trying to line up on the uh, cat when you're doing it by yourself. 
go. Excellent. So after we unload the uh, cat here, we're going to go ahead and do the Field of Canola in high speed, because you all seem to enjoy that as well. Then we'll come back when we're done with this. I'm not going to bunker any of this canola. Uh, it's all going to go straight to the shop, because remember, we're, we're aiming to buy the big field. I think we might be able to do it this episode. So uh, put that pipe in. Let's kind of some lights go and let's hire a worker and we'll start our high speed video so we're back rocking along at the high speed canola harvest and we high speed canola harvesters uh, <laughs> why do i do things like that it just makes me sound derpier than i usually am there's a lot of derp the derp is strong with this one anyway um while we're doing high-speed canola harvesting, there's a few things that we can we can chat about. Some of you uh, found that uh, found out because you follow me on Twitter or Twitch or Facebook um, that I'm doing more live streams. I did one last week, yeah, last week uh, with World of Tanks and a little bit of Minecraft. I'm gonna do more live streams so uh, if you don't follow me on Twitter or Facebook it's easier to follow me on Twitter honestly um, when it comes to live streams um, but my Twitter and my Facebook links I can't actually link you to them but they're on my end splash screen um, <clears throat> feel feel free to follow me on Twitter um, Twitter is more like what I see and kind of random at times uh, kind of also a little ranty section sometimes as well. Facebook is more a reflector of my YouTube posts. And then random other things. Pictures of some silliness that I've found in games or things like that. But, uh, yep. So definitely follow me on uh, Twitch or Twitter or Facebook. Come in and hang out while I do some live streams. Uh, they're going to be completely random, unscheduled. I don't know what games I'm going to play. I might have Farm Sim someday. It won't be this map. Um, I'm not going to do this map on anything but the Let's Play. But, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what else are we doing here? I, I'm, I'm sure that, that y'all uh, enjoyed episode 50 of Feed the Beast. We'll see what what happens. There's There's things going on, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> cliffhanger! Cliffhanger! What else are we doing here? Oh, I've got to replace some of that that Feed the Beast time during uh, for at least a little bit. So look for some new games, uh, some interesting games. Games I, I didn't really think I was going to play on the channel initially. Um, one, I didn't think I was going to play on the channel. I picked it up for like three bucks. And I was like, oh, I've got to play this. I might as well put it on my channel. Um, and then um, I, I know that the, a lot of people don't like it, but the Sierra Games series, you know, King's Quest, Space Quest, Police Quest, that kind of stuff. I know it's, it's, not, a pop, it's not popular. My King's Quest 1 was not popular. But I enjoy it, so I'm going to play it. And I hope you kind of enjoy it, too. Um, just because the graphics are dated doesn't mean that my wit is dated. Wait, my wit is dated. Never mind. Forget I said that part. The wit's still there anyway. <laughs> I did realize, partway through this harvest, by the way, that I should have used the S limiter to up the speed of the cat. So yeah, that's going to be fixed for next harvest, because, um, oops. My bad. My bad. We're coming up, uh... We've passed the halfway point of Season 2 of Farm Sim Mods, which is exciting. Um, because I'm, d I'm, I'm lumping multiple mods into any mod spotlight, it does mean that it's going to be a very full awards show. I might actually have to make that awards show into like a two-parter. What else? What else is going down? I don't know what else is going down. Pax. If you have it, if you if, if you're going to PAX Prime, I think I've said this a couple times, if you're going to PAX Prime, um, me and Doss are going to be there. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, follow Again, follow me on Twitter because I'll be tweeting from, uh, 
from the show floor there in Seattle. And I'll probably be tweeting every once in a while when outside the show floor when I when we take off to go someplace, you know, down to Pike Street Market or something like that. So totally follow follow me on Twitter there. And we, we are gonna try to video put some some daily videos out with some some good content after the show. It's gonna be a little bit after the show. <laughs> the week after the show. That's exciting. I, I'm, I'm ready to go back to packs. Working on another angle for something else fun as well. Because, you know, you gotta have some fun going on. You gotta have something to look forward to. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Have y'all been following Doss and Bioshock? I hope you have. She had, she had a total fail episode. <laughs> you have to go check it out gonna do all the Bioshocks. So if you don't like one, just hang out and watch. Just, she'll get to, to two and infinite eventually. It's fun to watch her because she's not a she's not a first person shooter person. So totally cool to to watch someone who is not a first person shooter player play a first person shooter. It's kinda cool. Some of you uh, questioned some of my selections of my uh, LP spotlights, specifically Cart Life, because Cart Life is kind of uh, odd. But it was made this year. It's an indie game, you know. Indie games are different. It's not most of y'all's cup of tea. It honestly wasn't my cup of tea either. But I picked it up because it was cheap and it looked interesting. So uh, I've got some more LP spotlights lined up. Tomorrow's I like. Tomorrow it might actually become an L a Let's Play. Period. We'll see what you guys think. I've already got some ideas for the next season of uh, the Farmson LP. I know we're, we're not even halfway through season one. I've already got a thought for season two. And if we meet our goal, like blow through our goal, goal here <laughs> early in season one, I might, I might consider switching over to a like ending season one a little bit early and jumping immediately into season two instead of waiting a couple weeks or more um, like I was originally planning on so we'll see we did really good this the first not even half the season we're already at nearly half mil so it gives me some serious thought about what I can do I come up with a way to make it a smooth what 1.2 for a windmill yeah something like that how many of you are uh, totally ready for summer to come? I, I am. Oh my gosh, it snowed last week. We got a foot and change of snow. Uh, probably like 15, 16 inches of snow. No kidding. Just because, you know. Then, beginning of this week, what did we get? Two days of snow. It's like, really? Can can we can we not have winter anymore? Because winter winter totally blows. I don't like winter. So, what are you gonna do, right? You know, live in this climate, I guess. But I'm ready for summer. Ho hopefully, the video schedule will continue in across the summer. There might be hiccups here and there because you know. I need a little holiday here and there. I can't always, uh, can't just work my fingers to the bone. And, uh, you know, we totally have to, uh, totally have to pay the bills, so work comes first. Stinks. Terrible work. Evil. Enjoy your time away from work. So comment down below, to, to completely change subjects, comment down below let me know if you're going to PAX Prime. If you're not going to PAX Prime, what what kind of coverage do you, would you like? I mean, know that PAX Prime is not nothing like Eurogamer. PAX Prime is focused on American-style games, which means a lot of first-person shooters and crap like that, cheesy MMOs and things like that. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you got like there's something that you like totally. Oh, I know it's gonna be shown at PAX Prime, and I want you to to check it out or something like that. 
do note if the lines are like uber long, it ain't gonna happen, but usually I can kind of finagle things around, especially, you know, Sunday, the show starts to slow down. Go to the four day show, I'm not going to Monday. So yeah, let me know if there's if there's something you, you want us to look at at PAX Prime. Otherwise, we're just going to kind of wander around and look at whatever catches our eye. All right, looks like we're coming up to the end of our harvest. So uh, time to jump cut back into regular time. And we're back. We, uh, I, I had a phone call right at the end. So I was, <laughs> it was like the worst timing ever for a phone call. And it was important, so I actually had to take it. Anyway, we have finished our harvest with, um, uh, you know, it, it wasn't a huge increase in capital. We're going to see what the final tally is. I'm thinking, based on the numbers here, canola is an easy crop, meaning to turn this field over is simple. I just go get the Kirovitz and run the Kirovitz over here with the seed, with the cedar because there's nothing to do. Simple crop. But wheat and barley are more difficult crops to turn over because we have to deal with the straw. However, all that straw is money in the biogas facility. And I don't think that the increased price of the canola is high enough to take into account the, si the money we're making off the silage facility or the biogas facility. I don't think I don't think it's worth it. Because if we look at the numbers here We're looking at, oh, there's been some price fluctuation, but we usually go to the mill with our wheat, 245 per ton. It's 635 per ton here at the inn. So we're looking at a difference of mm, 390 per ton. But we're generating huge amounts of straw that were then able to convert into biogas. I, I'm not sold on canola as the answer to our, to our desire for, for more money. More money. Anyway. All right, I'm gonna go park this here. I like how the roof of the Ford looks all dirty. It's nice. All right, so we're going to park the Ford up. Let's hop over to this. Get this guy out of the way. All right. Now, we have just a shaver under a half million dollars. That's that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, there's really no other way to, to call it. That is awesome. And if we run wheat or barley again on this field, I think that's really the ticket. I think wheat is the ticket. I'm going to use that little field over there to continue like playing with the numbers because I just want to see what the numbers do. I'm not, I want to see what spraying is going to do. And um, we're going to do barley over there too. So let's see, put the cat up. And yeah, I know, my fuel drinking cat. I am not going to switch to the the TT, uh, the Terra Track this season. I will switch to the Terra Track next season if I do a large map. Put the pipe through the wall there. <laughs> there. All right. So 
Do I want to hook you up and run you? What am I doing? Uh, let's check on the sheep really quick. Sheep are perfectly productive and happy. And oh my goodness, we've got eggs. Pro we got an egg problem. Um, let's go take care of our egg problem. Thankfully, with our mod, our egg problem is easy to solve. Oh, quiet, chicken. Open door. Ah, look at all those eggs. Mm, eggs. All right. So. Good. We got that. Oh, I know what I was going to check. Let's check our fields. Go to our bank of Hagenstadt. Oh, we do have a loan. We probably need to pay off our loan again. Let's go to the field management really quick. Now, we were looking at field 10 as our optimal field. Field 10 is 155,000. Hmm. Thinking we can do field 10. Well, field 14 has more money. And field 35 is also pretty big. But I like field 10 because it's so close to the farm. So, and it's it's still a over 100 hectare field. So we could buy field 10. And we'd have plenty of money left over. You know what? Let's do it. Let's buy field 10. Yeah. Um, let's also... Should we pay off our loan? No, let's not pay off our loan quite yet. All right, let us... Um, hmm. Let's see, what are we going to do for seeding? This will seed anything, but it is from Season 2, where we really don't have much. That's 120,000. Actually, I... You know what? I'm not going to do that one. Let's go to Cedars. Wait a minute. Duh, went right by it, didn't I? <laughs> All right, so we can get the Condor. And really, why wouldn't we get the Condor, right? We can afford it. It gets the coverage we need. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and pick up a condor. This has a lower working width. No, it has an equal working width. But we're gonna need it in order to to fertilize that field. So I think I'm going to take this one back. Yeah, I think I'm going to take this one back and get the other. And then and this cedar, I know you guys are wondering, why do, why are you keeping this cedar? I'm keeping this cedar because I don't think the condor on that little field makes a heck of a lot of sense. Where's the shop again? Uh, shop is this way. To the shop! Dun 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 dun! Alright, so we've got ourselves the biggest, well, not the biggest field, but we got our over 100 hectare field. Right over there. It's going to take forever and a day to sell. Um, yeah. Good night. And we've still got a loan, but it's only a $70,000 loan, so that's not a big deal. So I think, I think, now the one thing I'm, I'm like, cr 
cringing about is the amount of um, the amount of straw that is going to be produced on this field when I sow it. Because <laughs> the logical thing for me to do is go ahead and sow it in wheat. And run, you know what, actually, why don't we do barley? We haven't done barley yet. Someone even said in the comments, do barley. All right. I can do that. I can do that. And I'll have this guy run barley on field 10. I'll get the Ford with the other trail, the other cedar there, to run on the other fields. Come on. I am going to fill this up because I do often use um, use these manually. But I'm not going to fill it all the way up. I think a quarter is good. Alright. So let's go. I'm also going to have the Ford. I think I'm going to have the Ford sow the little field. Rack up the uh, the sheep wool, and maybe even deliver it. Oh man, this field is massive. <sighs> Who thought this early in the season we would have the large field and we'd be ready to plant for our for our hundred hectare field. Look at this. You like that. Perfect. I'm going to allow a little bit of overlap there because I have noticed these fields aren't perfectly square. Oh man. Ready dude? Go to it. Get her done. He's going to be busy for a while. All right, you. We're going to need bigger trailers. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> or a lot more of them. Okay, so first things first, let's get some hay bales loaded up. This is gonna be this is gonna be a disaster. I know it. I'm so used to the agri vector and the way it behaves. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <gasps> right on the end. Whoop. Thunk. Come on. Come on. All the way on. Come on. Come on. Alright, fine. Just stay there then. I don't care. Come on, up. You're not going to have a stucco incident. Well, maybe we will. <laughs> Almost the acceleration on this Ford is just crazy. A little bit farther forward with you. There. No, I need you to get off the end. Ah. Uh, nope, go forward. Down. What is the dealio? What am I doing wrong here? There. Come on. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to put you right there. The forks are... straight. Get off the end of the fork. Stupid thing. Come on. There. Now back up. Seriously? 
See, this is what drives me crazy about the game, is the physics model, <laughs> or lack thereof. Really? Because that happens every day on a farm, I'm sure. Like, you guys totally can just pick up a pallet and it just does that. Come on. Oh, jeez. Boink! <laughs> Uh, I usually actually use bale forks, not pallet forks, for moving this stuff, because these pallet forks are ridiculously long. Which sort of helps because of the game's broken physics, where stuff doesn't always stick like it should. Right, down a little bit more. Okay. I just want you to stay right on the end of my fork. It's like it's like eating peas with a fork. At some point you just want to give up and go get a knife. Kidding, kidding. Alright, Ford. Quit annoying me. <laughs> I wonder if the Kiravis is even close to finishing one one pass. Push comes to shove, I'll detach the uh, the fork and leave it on the back of the cure of the cane. Uh. Yeah. Okay, done with that fun job. There. Okay. Think he's done yet? Let's find out. Oh, yep, he's on his way back. Ah, <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's go get the other cedar. Get some barley sa seeded, so... Seed sown? Whatever. Go... That's not what I wanted. Harley, here we go. <laughs> uh, that tractor. That field. My goodness. Okay, so we're going to hire another worker to handle this field because it's safer overall <laughs> for me. To hire workers than it is to do it myself. Get out of the way. Cool. Alright, so we have two fields going. We've got this field with barley. We have the big giant field with barley. The big old condor. Man. How long has he been working and he just finished his second pass? How many passes do you think it's going to take? You missed a spot right there. You missed a spot. You're overlapping. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, what do we think? He's going to have to do... 12 passes, I'm betting. I'm wondering if I should buy another Kirovitz. And another Cedar. Well, I guess this guy, when he's done, well, he's going to do the other field. Ugh. Bugger. How much is another... All right, so that would be 155. That would leave us with 25, basically. And that would leave us pretty much on the popper's step. We wouldn't be able to afford the seed necessary. Hmm. Yeah. 
And technically this one is the second largest in the game. When he's done here, I could set him to work on this. Still got that one over there. 